Welcome YouTube family and welcome to another video of the Kevin Strong Show. And in this video, we're going to talk about how 74 million Americans have more credit card debt than they do in their personal savings account. Stay tuned to the end of this video because we're going to talk about something that just recently went active, the Fed Now program. Uh, so that's very interesting and probably ultimately going to lead to a digital currency in the future, in my humble opinion. If you're new to my show, welcome. Let's start off by saying, hey, hit that like button, share my content, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you are notified when I do release my videos, which is typically once a week, Saturday around 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and tee up this presentation. Some really good information I want to uh, share with you guys. And like I said, <clears throat> the start of this video, we're talking about how 74 million Americans have more credit card debt than personal savings. So before we get into the um, video, I just want to give you a quick edification about FICO scores. I'm not going to do a deep dive into that because this video is about credit card debt. But for those of you who don't know, typically your FICO score ranges from anywhere from 300 to 850. But what most people do not know is that your FICO score really is a snapshot of your payment history within the last 24 months. Yes, it does take into consideration your whole payment history. But what typically generates your FICO score, your credit score, is your payment history within the last 24 months. And they use special algorithms to arrive at that score. And what it tells a prospective lender is the likelihood of you paying your bills based on that 24 month system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into that. I thought that would be interesting to share with my listening audience because a lot of people don't talk about that, about you know FICO scores and what it's really all about. So let's talk about this deep dive. 74 million Americans now have more credit card debt than emergency savings, which is the highest that figure has been in the last nine years. We all know this is going to be a growing trend in the near future and probably continue for a very, very long time. That's why my tagline is keep your credit score up and your debt down. Only 44 percent of American households have more emergency savings than credit card debt. So that's fastly approaching almost 50% of the American population. People are putting mundane transactions on credit card, food, energy bills, because obviously wages are not keeping up with inflation. So their survival mode kicks in for a lot of people is that the only way to maintain they, their standard of living is to put some of those transactions on credit instead of paying for it in cash because they simply don't have the cash. The reason this makes sense is because if you're paying more in interest on credit card debt, then you're making on interest you gain by savings, you're still losing money. So it's a no win situation. The reason why I put this bullet point in there, to me, that bullet point is synonymous with being on the debt treadmill. Your credit card rate, let's say, or interest rate is at 20%. But you might only be getting two, three percent in your savings account. Hell, even if you put it in a T bill, a one year T bill that's paying a little bit over five percent now, when you factor in a five thousand dollar T bill, but you're paying back eight thousand dollars in credit card debt at 20 percent, you're in the red. So that's my definition of just being on that debt treadmill. You've got to get that reverse. You got to get rid of the debt and make sure that you, um, your income is at or above inflation. We live in an age where people are constantly comparing their lives to those of their peers, especially those through social media. Many people finance their extravagant lifestyles with credit cards in order to keep up with the Joneses. We all know this is true. I am very, very, very old school where if you've got an unmanageable amount of debt, I am not one who subscribes to, well, I need a vacation or the kids need a vacation or the wife needs a vacation, stay your ass at home. <laughs> Find some other way to decompress from the hustles and bustles of work, working Monday through Friday. I don't understand this insatiable appetite to take a six-year-old to freaking Disneyland and spend eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. A, they're probably not going to remember that shit or very seldom they do. 
And even if they do, are you willing to position to do that? They would probably get just as much as enjoyment as did if you had a pool party at some local hotel, invited all their friends. They wouldn't really know the difference. Now, I'm not trying to be a cheapskate here, but what I'm saying is that when you have an insurmountable amount or unmanageable amount of credit card debt that's preventing you from establishing emergency savings, being able to pay yourself, which ideally you should do first, and setting yourself up for financial security as you get older, those little snapshot memories of taking a vacation by paying for it with a credit card is not a wise decision. We'll always come back to bite you. So inflation is rising. Energy costs will make this problem much, much worse, as we all know. So I thought this would be an interesting graph. Credit card debt by age, just as, as of uh, June of 2023. So as you can see, 18 to 26, about 2,800 bucks. The millennium, 27 to 42 age bracket, about close to $6,000. And obviously these numbers are going to continue to grow up, uh, go up as time goes on. Generation X, that's kind of where I'm at, 43 to 58, 8,000. Baby boomers, 59 to 77, almost $7,500 worth of credit card debt. So your ass is 60 years old and you still have credit card debt. 78 to 95 almost approaching $6,000 in credit card debt. So this is very, very disturbing because most of the folks in this age bracket are probably retired, which means they're on fixed income. So the fact that they have this type of credit card debt probably at 16 or 20% and you're dealing with inflation, you got to factor that in, right? Because if the average credit card interest rate is around 5%, I mean 5%, hell, 20, 25%, and then you factor in what real inflation is, you're paying back almost 30%. You just cannot get ahead. So some more bad news. Total credit card debt stood at $986 billion in the first quarter of 2023, according to Fed Reserve Bank of New York. So this basically is going to be over a trillion dollars by the end of this year. Usually balances fall in the beginning of the year as borrowers stay, start paying down debt after the peak holiday shopping season. That's not happening uh, this particular time. And credit card balances are up almost 20% in one year. 20% in one year, according um, to credit industry insight reports from TransUnion. So that is very, very uh, an alarming thing that's going on. Here's what I wanted to share with you guys about this fit now. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the... Um, technical aspects of it. But basically, with the Fed now program, it's, it's basically an infrastructure developed by the Fed to speed up the payment process. So for layman purposes, you know, you have a transaction and there's a third party that facilitates that money to the end to the to recipient. So you get the sender and the receiver. So a lot of times you'll see something if you have direct deposit, it'll say, let's say $2,000 from your check and it'll say pending. And then it takes a couple of days before that money actually hits your account. What the Fed system is set up to do is to transfer that money immediately. So technically you would get paid on your, uh, at the end of the payday. So let's just say for easy math, since we're almost approaching the end of July, that the, the pay period in July 31st, but you're supposed to get paid on August 5th. With this new Fed system, once the pay period expires, in this example, July 31st, you would get paid on July 31st. You wouldn't have to wait until August 5th. So on the surface, this seems like a very uh, innocuous, fast way, more efficient way to get your money to you. But by doing so, now I'm transitioning into the negative, there is no independent third party involved it's just a Fed. So that transparency is no longer, uh, the lack of transparency is no longer there. Everything becomes transparent. So the transaction is seen in terms of what you're spending your money on. Here is the biggest drawback to this damn Fed thing. But I know people are going to suck into this stuff because they want their money now because their broker's a joke. They tow up <laughs> from the flow up. Here's the point. Because the Fed is facilitating this transaction in terms of getting paid immediately and removing a third party processing uh, component, 
If you are, listen to me, if you are the victim of a scam, you're not going to be able to get a refund. And we know cybersecurity is at an all time high. That's right. I'm not joking right now. If you are the victim, as the system is currently set up right now, the victim of fraud, $5,000, 10000 $20,000, fraudulent transaction, you did nothing wrong, somebody compromised your information, got your information online, you're not getting refund by the Fed because the Fed is the one that's facilitating this. There is, they're removing that third-party component. So what the Fed is telling everybody who wants to join the system, which ultimately they're going to have to, they're telling them, hey, you need to boost up your infrastructure, your firewalls to preclude and mitigate the possibility of your customers being victims of fraud. But in the event, through all of those measures, to no avail, I'm sorry, you're still going to have to just suck it up. So very interesting topic. Uh, I do think it, it, is a, it is a slippery slope to a digital currency which would be total control. I just think this is the first step heading ultimately in that direction, but only time will tell. So that's gonna do it for this edition of the Kevin Strong Show. Once again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so by hitting that subscribe button, hitting the bell notification so you do get notified when I do release my videos, which is typically on a Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I hope you enjoyed my content and once content. And once again, I am going to leave you with my famous slogan because it's becoming even more and more important each day. Keep your credit score up and your debt down. This was the Kevin Strong Show. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one.